Uh, good afternoon, esteemed jury members and my co-presenters. So the topic which I'll be presenting is forensic psychological investigative techniques in India, their status as aid in investigation and corroborative evidence as seen from judgments. So this is a qualitative analysis, meta-analysis. Uh, I'm a student from National Forensic Sciences University, currently pursuing MA criminology with specialization in forensic psychology. Uh, the need for the study is crime in the current era has seen significant growth and increase in the number of crimes is always directly proportional to the pendency of cases. As we can see, pendency of cases is on high range. The crime and criminals in the modern era differ those from the conventional eras because they are very smart these days. The physical evidence left on the crime scene is negligible or nil. And investigative agencies always face difficulties to gather evidence. Further, when evidence is available, investigating agencies may list down possible suspects in a case. However, their involvement in the case has to be proved by the prosecution. And in such a scenarios, forensic psychological investigative techniques such as polygraph, BIOS, brain electrical oscillation signature profiling, SDS, suspect detection system, and LBA, laid voice analysis, which are byproducts of amalgamation of uh, psychophysiological principles and technology come to the rescue. Uh, I'll be talking about the current legal status of forensic psychological investigative techniques in India, as we can see from the Article 23 and Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. Article 20, Clause 3 says, no person, no accused shall be a witness against himself. It is also called as no compelled testimony. And Article 21 advocates for right to life and liberty. So as per Article 20, Clause 3, no person shall be compelled to be a witness and it is argued that these forensic psychological investigative techniques compel a person to be witness against himself. The same thing has also been established in Selby versus State of Karnataka, wherein the Apex Court said that answers given during these tests are not consciously or voluntarily down and hence these violate the human rights. However, if an individual consented and the court permitted for administration of such tests, then they could be administered. Uh, now, there was a, another case, State of Bombay versus Kati Kalu Ogad, which I consider it as game changer because as per Section 27 of the Indian Evidence Act, any information given by accused person in police custody leading to discovery of a fact becomes admissible if such information has been uh, taken without any coercion, threat or inducement. And with uh, with relating the same with forensic psychological investigative techniques wherein a person gives his consent for the administration of the test and if administration of these techniques lead to discovery of some fact then their evidentiary value is considered as prominent and even conclusive sometimes we can see in the further slides now uh, before dwelling on to the judgments i like to dwell upon the psychophysiological principles behind these techniques when it comes to polygraph sds and lva the principle behind them is the stress response system of the body. Uh, whenever a body, whenever we are subjected to any kind of stress, the autonomic nervous system gets activated and two hormones, uh, the adenocorticotropic hormones is secreted, which for short-term stress uh, releases adrenaline and for long-term stress releases cortisol. Now, due to these hormones, there are significant changes in our body, such as increased blood pressure, uh, increase in the rate of respiration, accelerated heart rate, and increase in the uh, skin precipitation. Now, all these parameters which are due to the stress response are measured using various equipments in polygraph such as pneumograph, GSR, galvanic skin response, uh, thomachic and abdominal pneumograph and uh, cardiosigmograph. And when it comes to BIOS, the BIOS works on the principle of retrieval of autobiographical memory. Now, we may not remember what we had for lunch three days ago, but we do remember which uh, cake we ate on our last birthday because it was a significant activity and it is saved in our autobiographical memory. And hence, crime is always supposed to be an autobiographical memory, which is retrieved by queuing them through probes using brain electrical oscillation signature profiling. Now, the, as I said, my study design is qualitative based on meta-analysis. Analysis, I analyzed total of 22 judgments and the sources were Indian Kanun, Live Law and certain newspaper articles. And all the information which I'll be uh, showing in my subsequent slides have been taken from authentic public domain, which were readily available. Therefore, no defamation or violation of privacy is intended by me. Now, these were the prominent cases which I analyzed. The uh, cases marked in red 
were more prominent, which I'll be explaining in my next slides. In the case of Kunjilal Meher versus State of Orissa, the accused, uh, due to professional rivalry, uh, sent a parcel to the house of the victim consisting of a bomb. The victim's uh, uh, son was married just two days ago and the parcel was sent in the pretext of a wedding gift. Uh, after opening the parcel, there was a bomb and it exploded. So the offenses were registered as per section 307, attempt to murder, section 302, homicide, 201 of the Indian Penal Code and section 3 and 4 of the Explosive Substances Act. Now, the accused person, Punji Lal, also sent a letter to the SP of the district who was investigating a case to not to indulge in the case further. And this was done due to a professional rivalry and the victims, whoever died, they deserve to die. Uh, now, based on the circumstantial evidences, the search was conducted. Uh, the accused was identified and similar letters which were given to SP, six or seven copies were found in the house of victim. Sorry, the accused. Now, the accused was brought to DFS Gandhinagar, Directorate of Forensic Science Services, and he was subjected to SDS and LVA. Now, this technique showed Kunjilal's in, uh, involvement in the blast, which was, of course, corroborated by other circumstantial evidence, and hence he was convicted. Uh, there was another case in which the case law which I cited, uh, Katu Kalu Ogad versus State of Bombay is implemented. This was Kamal Singhala versus NCT of Delhi. Uh, this case was cracked after 10 years due to use of brain electrical oscillation signature profiling in which the accused was subjected to BIOS and based on the probes, uh, a probe was identified that accused had been hiding the body of victim in his warehouse. And the search was conducted by the police and the bones were retrieved from there after 10 years based on which the accused was convicted. Now, the, the law I cited, Katuka Logod versus State of Bombay, comes into picture. Even after using the forensic psychological investigative techniques, it leads to discovery of some fact which is directly related to the case. Then the evidence is conclusive. And in this case, he was duly convicted. Uh, in another case, Gansham Joruba versus State of Gujarat, LVN SDS was used wherein a writ petition was find, uh, filed by the victim's father. The victim had, victim was alleged that he committed suicide and the he used to live in a PG and the father of the victim filed a writ petition accusing the PG owner of abetting his son to commit suicide. However, all the accused were subjected to LVN SDS and the results alleged and the results uh, made them reveal that they are not suspects and they were acquitted. In another similar case, Baljinder Singh versus State of Haryana, uh, after 11 years, the accused were again brought to uh, DFS Gandhinagar, wherein they were administered through BIOS and narco analysis, where they were proved innocent and they were also acquitted. So as we see, these forensic psychological investigative techniques are not only efficient tool for proving one's guilt, but also one's innocence. Now, the major observations and recommendations are FPITs, as I said, are not only important tools for providing one guilt, but also innocence. Now, they provide direction to the cases where there is minimal or no evidence. And when there is presence of corroborative evidence, these are efficient aid in investigation, which can lead to conviction. Now, although these FPITs are considered to be corroborative in nature, their usage leading to conviction is an art. By using the guidelines of Katukalu Ogard versus State of Bombay, we, uh, and linking the psychological evidence directly to the physical evidence, we can attain conviction. This was noticed in Kamal Singhala case, which I mentioned. Uh, another major recommendation was BIOS, specifically considering its two features. One, it is non-invasive non in nature, unlike narco analysis, and the subject has to remain silent throughout the process of the BIOS. He has nothing to answer. So we retrieve the information from his brain, although th this is also one of the uh, factor in conflict. However, taking these two uh, considerations, it should not. Be, it should be considered out of Article 23 of the Indian Constitution, and its evidentiary value should be prominent, if not conclusive. Uh, these are my major references. Thank you.